So let's pull this all together and let's do one long problem that'll highlight all the steps. So I've crudely drawn over here on the board mass, moles, and numbers. The reason I've done this is I want you to intuitively think about how many steps it's going to take to do the conversion you're interested in. So the problem we're going to solve is if we have 44.0 grams of CO2, how many atoms of oxygen do you have? So with all these problems, you need to start with what you know. You have 44 grams of CO2. Now figure out what you want to find. In this case, it's going to be atoms of oxygen. So somehow we need to take this number and convert it down to atoms of oxygen. Now you need to intuit to yourself how many steps is this going to take. So let's see where we're starting at. We're starting at mass here. So this is our starting point. And we need to go to atoms, and this is going to represent numbers, so we're going to finish here. So just if we were asked to go from grams of CO2 to, to molecules of CO2, we'd have one step, which is the mass to moles conversion. So we have at least one factor in there. And the second step, which is the moles to numbers conversion. So we need to have at least those two conversion factors. Now the other thing is, we're starting out with CO2 and we're finishing up with oxygen. We're not finishing with what we're starting with, so we need an additional conversion factor to get us from CO2 to oxygen. So we can intuit, based off the problem statement alone, that we're going to have to have three conversion factors to make this work. So the first conversion factor here is going to be our mass to moles. And this is what we always have to do. If we're given a mass, we have to convert to moles. So carbon weighs 12, oxygen weighs 16. So when we add up the weights, as we did in the previous video, we get that our atomic weight is 44, 44.0 grams per mole. So the question is, do you multiply or divide? Well, there's two ways to do this. You've got grams of CO2 or moles of CO2, and you want to finish with moles of CO2. So we've got to divide if we want to get the units in the right place. The second thing is to recognize that as we go from mass to moles, we need to get smaller. So we've got 44. If we multiply by 44, our conversion factor is going to get bigger. If we divide by 44, we're going to get smaller. So we're going to have to divide by this 44.0 grams of CO2 for one mole of CO2. At this point, we are now in moles of CO2. And we've got a couple choices as we're perceived here. Either we can take Put a conversion factor here to get us from moles of CO2 to moles of oxygen, or we can go directly to atoms. So I'll do that next. But let's take the first, let's go ahead and let's go to numbers. So we're going from moles to numbers, and as I said in the previous video, you're always going to do this by multiplying the same conversion factor. This is Avogadro's number. So should your number get bigger or smaller? Well, think about it. This should be a huge power of 10, this should not. So Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This is a very big number, which means we're going to need to multiply by it to get the very big number we should be finishing with. So this is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2 for every mole of CO2. Now that we're in atoms, we have to build up our conversion factor between CO2 and oxygen. So we've got CO2. We're coming from molecules of CO2. And our coefficient on oxygen here is going to be two atoms of O. So this will give us two atoms of O for every one molecule of CO2. So we go through, check our units. We've got cancellation of grams, cancellation of moles, cancellation of molecules of CO2, and this leaves us with atoms of oxygen, which we want to finish with. Now let's say you want to flip these two steps. Let's say you didn't want to wait until you got to atoms to go to oxygen. You want to do it here. Setup is still the same for the first conversion factor. One mole of CO2 for 44.0 grams of CO2. That's fine, nothing's changed. So we got 44.0 grams of CO2. We can't go anywhere else. We have to go to moles first. Now, instead of using this mole of CO2 to molecule of CO2, what we can do is we can use a mole ratio, which comes from the chemical formula. So for every mole of CO2, we have two moles of oxygen. And this comes from the chemical formula. For every mole of our compound, mole of CO2, we've got two moles of oxygen. 
Next step, we're in moles of oxygen. We need to go to atoms of oxygen. We're going to multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. For every mole of oxygen. And this will give us the same finishing point. The only thing that happens between these two methods is swapping when you multiply by Avogadro's number and swapping when you convert between oxygen and CO2. So either method should give you the same result. It's gonna be, the only thing that you're changing basically is order of operations in some units. At the end of the day though, you're gonna end up with 1.2 times 10 to the 24 atoms of oxygen. So this is how you set up most of these problems. Begin with by saying, figuring out what you're being asked to find and what you're given. Look at your mole flow diagram, figure out how many steps it's gonna take, figure out what those conversion factors are, implement your conversion factors and get your final answer. That's it.